Mystery fans, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, you might not know it, but Tim Curry invented the video review show in 1985. Inadvertently, of course. You see, he was playing Wadsworth the butler in the movie Clue when... Well, today's subject is the movie Clue. But to understand the birth of the video review show, we must go through the movie step by step. Beginning, of course, with the introduction. Released in 1985, Clue is based on the board game, which is known in the UK as Cluedo, after the board game Ludo. A group of strangers are invited to a country house, where they are to confront their blackmailer. But before the night is through, said blackmailer, along with several others, will meet their end. Featuring an all-star ensemble with the likes of Tim Curry, Madeline Kahn, Christopher Lloyd and Mike McKean, there's certainly no shortage of star power. So grab your spyglass and come with me to our country manor where we discover the roots of the internet review show in... Clue! The year is 1954, and six disparate individuals arrive at a New England mansion. The first to arrive is Colonel Mustard. Of course, that's not his real name. But tonight, all of our guests will be meeting under assumed names. And why? Well, mostly to save face, of course. After all, they are facing down their blackmailer. Followed by Mrs. White, Mrs. Peacock, Mr. Green, while Professor Plum and Miss Scarlet arrive together. The assembled guests make light conversation over dinner. This is one of my favourite recipes. I know, madam. Enter Mr. Body, who is clearly having none of whatever this is. <laughs> and over brandy, we finally discover what brought our protagonists to this mansion. Because Mr. Body was the one who was threatening to expose them all. So. What are the terrible secrets that these six poor souls are so very, very desperate to hide? Permit me to elaborate with this handy dandy visual aid. Mr. Body has a little game he'd like to play. If one of you kills Wadsworth now, no one but the seven of us will ever know. Which fatally backfires when the lights go out. Or does it? For in the chaos, the survivors turn upon one another. And the revelations don't stop there. You see, Wadsworth only intended that these six poor souls would meet Mr. Body, ex Bose the odious little oik, and then send him off to the slammer for blackmailing them all. Unfortunately, as you can see, this went about as well as you'd expect. Which leads us to another House of Love top tip. When exposing blackmailers, always remove everything and anything that can be used as a weapon. Not that I'd expect that many people would need to expose a blackmailer in their everyday lives, but still. The next victim is the cook. Mr. Body's, uh, body, disappears. Then reappears with new wounds. Now that's terrible luck. To escape death by pretending to already be dead, and then to get your brains bashed in. It's no death being killed twice in the same evening. Though I did know a fella who was killed twice years apart. That was more of a death. Bung me a Kofi donation, maybe I'll tell you about it. Wadsworth the butler collects the weapons, locks them in a cabinet, and it's decided to remove the cabinet's key from play. But then, a stranded motorist turns up on the doorstep. 
and then a passing policeman notices the stranded motorist's car. But more importantly, someone doesn't want the stranded motorist divulging that he used to work for them. And then the random policeman appears, who is naturally suspicious. Luckily, some quick thinking saves the day. It's an ugly business is murder. Much more so when you have to cover up your crimes. Until the electricity is switched off. And not one. <laughs> not two. But three murders are committed in short order. Oh, come on. Forfeit, forfeit. I mean, I know singing telegrams are annoying and all that, but... Murder? Really? Ten demerits to... Oh, well. That'd be telling now, wouldn't it? We'll tend to merit to the murderer anyway. But then, Wadsworth announces that he knows who did it, and he proceeds to explain. Now, it's at this point that Tim Curry inadvertently invents the video review show. But I can't really show you the sequence, or any great part of it, because YouTube. So if you want to know who murdered the entire point of this video, it was YouTube, at two teenagers' studios, with their content ID system. And so our movie ends with the murderer revealed. Now, eagle-eyed viewers will have noticed that there were three scenes spliced together when I said that the murder had been revealed. You see, this movie has three endings, and I've purposefully avoided spoiling them all, because, spoiler alert, I'm going to put this movie into the House of Love, so, if you don't want to know who did it, click to this point in the video, and we'll move straight to why I'm going to put it into the House of Love. I'll even leave you a little spoiler space so you can do that now. clicked off, you'll want to know who done it. Well, there are three different endings, and each was randomly tacked on to a different print of the theatrical cut. So, let us investigate who the murderer really is. The salacious Miss Scarlet was the fiend behind the whole thing. But shock, Wadsworth was an FBI agent the whole time. The pious Mrs. Peacock was the fiend behind the whole thing. But shock! Wadsworth was an FBI agent all along. Wadsworth was the real blackmailer all along. But double shock! Mr. Green was an FBI agent the whole time! So that was Clue. And now you know the story of how the video review show was invented. And furthermore, I'm going to put this movie into the House of Love. I love this movie, even though it would seem to be everything I'd hate. A black comedy, based on a board game, shot through with murder? Well, despite the adult themes of murder, blackmail and so on, this movie only received a PG rating in the UK. But the murders aren't really why we're here. 
This is the blackest of black farce, and yet it's laugh out loud funny, utterly ridiculous, and the breakneck final act wherein the killer is revealed, in my own opinion at least, rivals any comedy climax from any 80s movie you'd care to mention. And in this entire movie there isn't one single duff performance. From the salacious Leslie Ann Warren's Miss Scarlet, to the deadpan Miss White of Madeline Kahn, and Christopher Lloyd's Professor Plum, the thoroughly nervy Mike McKean's Mr. Green, the histrionic Eileen Brennan's Mrs. Peacock, and of course, the turn on a dime, composure into frenzied lunacy of Tim Curry's Wadsworth. Not forgetting Martin Mull's Colonel Mustard, who, while unspectacular, is still far from terrible. And the whole thing about these people is they're all actually likeable. There isn't anyone among the cast who you'd think would want to slaughter with abandon. The flow of the movie is very standard 80s though. The characters are introduced, the movie starts slowly, everything's established, though it's told, not shown. Then the first victim falls, and everyone turns on each other, and through the night, one by one the bodies pile up. And it is a ridiculously convoluted story of intrigue, espionage, prostitution, blackmail, and of course, murder. Now if I had to pick a flaw, I could say that some of the puns in the script are incredibly corny. The home video cut featuring all three endings, I had to sit through the joke about communism being a red herring three times. But this is, again, saved by the breakneck and joyously confusing final act, wherein Wadsworth races through the entire plot faster than I ever could, and the genius of having a random ending in any given theatrical cut, so you never knew which ending you saw. Overall then, while this is definitely not for children, it is a brilliantly silly, fantastically acted movie that defies all expectations. So if you want to know who did it, they all did it. In the cinema, with the movie Clue. So thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, why not consider subscribing or ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, consider one of the e-begging links in the description below. Anyway. I've been Funky Monkey wishing you good days, safe nights, and great entertainment. So long, folks!